just felt that I, I wanted to give you a, a word today. It's from my heart. Uh, when you pastor as long as I have, and I, and I do some special, because I, I, I emailed the people yesterday. So I, I just want to speak on the message, be strong. Be strong. In fact, look at the person next to you right now and just say, be strong. Be strong. Fits in well with me saying the word for Tom is tenacious. It's almost like that. Just be tenacious and, and be strong. And I don't know how many verses I'm going to use today. I, 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 gave, I gave him several, but I said I have one key verse, which I'm going to get to in just a moment. Not yet, just a moment. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 9. It's a weird verse to preach from. And let me tell you why. It's a weird verse to preach from because this is a word that is spoken by Israel's enemies. It's an historical passage there in 1 Samuel. And actually, these words came out of the mouth of a Philistine. And if you don't remember, Philistines were the enemies of Israel. Goliath was a Philistine, for goodness sake. So how can I, but before I get to this verse, let me give you the context of, of that passage there in 1 Samuel chapter 4. So what's been happening is that Israel, as always, is in a battle. Just like a lot of you, even though you're in church today and you're looking good, it's a beautiful summer day here in Orange County, California. But a lot of stuff's going on. If we had time to share a lot of drama, it could be personal, family, business, spiritual, physical, whatever. But Israel has been in an ongoing battle with the Philistines, and the Philistines have just been kicking their butts. Can you say that in church? <laughs> I'm, the guest, I'm the guest speaker. I just did. I'm out. <laughs> I've been kicking their whatever you want to call it. <laughs> kind of like over the years, I was talking to Randy earlier. I mean, I haven't seen him. I think it's been about 25 years since I've seen him. But I remember Randy and I back at the church in the early days. He is a major Cardinal fan. And I'll never forget that. That's my number one memory, too. I remember one time going to a Dodger Cardinal playoff game. Was this in the 80s? It was in 1980. That's how old I am. I'm from the Jurassic Age, people. <laughs> I remember sitting up there down the left field line, and the Dodgers were in a playoff against the Cardinals. Who goes to the World Series? And so he's a Cardinal fan. <laughs> Guess who's laughing now? This season, by the way. <laughs> but back then, I'll never forget this, man. I said, so towards the end of the game, the Dodgers were trying to hang on and win. But uh, the Cardinals were starting to come back. And I remember the Dodgers brought in. We're up there, we're up there sitting next to them. We're up there talking. So Tom Lasorda goes out. You don't even remember Tom Lasorda. <laughs> he pulls the picture, and I think he brought in Tom Needen somebody, Needen, Needen Fewer. And Jack Clark came up to bat for the Cardinals. Jack Clark came up with the Giants, but I knew Jack Clark because Jack Clark was raised in the area I'm from. And he went to Gladstone High School, not far from where our church is at. He's a little, a little younger than me. He's been retired forever, and he's still younger than me. But uh, remember, Jack Clark came up. I remember I told you, I said, man, I said, they better walk this guy. He said, they don't walk him. He's going to hit a home run. But he came out the mouth, hit a home run. Cardinals won. And we had some kind of bet going on where I had to wear a Cardinal hat. Remember that? Do you remember that? He made me wear I should have brought a Dodger. If I hadn't thought about it, I would have brought a Dodger hat for you to wear today. Battles. So back, uh, back, Philistines were just killing Israel. So, fire, so here, here's what Israel decided to do. He said, man, we're getting beat. He said, maybe we should bring the Ark of the Covenant back into our camp. Now, if you don't know the Ark of the Covenant to them, not like a rabbit's foot, not like a lucky, char, uh, a lucky charm, but the Ark of the Covenant to them represented the presence of God. <laughs> it's almost kind of like just getting smashed in life. I mean, a lot of you, just, you're just getting smashed right now because Israel was to just, wasn't just getting beaten. They were getting beaten bad. They had just lost 4,000 men in a battle against the Philistines. 4,000. Picture Braveheart movies or something like that. You just got to get dead out there. So they said, maybe we should bring God into this. So, so uh, by, this isn't my message today, but some of you, listen, God ought not to be a matter of last resort, but first choice. Amen. But at least if things are still going crazy, maybe I'll think about bringing God. So what happened is that they went to Shiloh and they brought back the Ark of the Lord into the, into the camp. Now, if you remember what's in the Ark of the Covenant... Uh, I remember the old movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. The, the outside of the representation of the Ark and that old Sp Steven Spielberg flick, it was pretty accurate. I don't mean to sound morbid, but the Ark of the Covenant was probably about the size of a, of a child's coffin, you know, about that size. And, so, and then, of course, on top of the Ark were the cherubim, uh, and it was, it was the mercy thing on, on, there, but on there. But inside, in, inside the Ark, there were three things. I wonder if anyone remembers what those three things are. 
Inside the Ark of the Covenant were, were, were three things. I know this is church. I don't normally do this. It's like a class. But who remembers one of those things? It just said, yeah, what was it? Yeah, yeah, the Ten Commandments were in there. The Word of God, the Word of God was in there. What, what else was in there? Manna. That's right. There's two. The Word of God and there was manna. And what was the other one? That's right. Aaron's rod or Aaron's cane that had blossomed. Now, that, that is so symbolic of bringing God into your life, by the way. This, again, this is, I'm going to bring up this stuff up. But since I got on it, sometimes the Lord has me share a few things. First of all, if you're facing a battle, it might be a good idea to bring God's will, God's word, the, the, if you will, the Ten Commandments into your presence. Like, like, what does God say? We have so many talking heads on television, experts on the radio. Nowadays, with your smartphones, you can do whatever. You can contact anyone you want to contact, watch anything you want to watch on that. So what about saying, maybe we ought to listen to what God has to say. That it represented, his, his word represents his will. Not only that, there's manna. That represents God's provision. You remember where manna came from when they were wanting in the wilderness? One of the ways God provided for the nation was to provide this manna from heaven that sustained Israel until they were finally able to enter into the promised land and you know, enjoy the produce of their own labors. So there is the uh, word of God. There's the provision of God. And I love the last one. Aaron, King James calls it, Aaron's rod that budded. Part of the way that God confirmed his call upon Moses' life and with Aaron was to say, hey, just, 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 just pick up that, that dead stick. Pick up a dead stick. Picked up a dead stick and it blossomed. Amen. It is an incredible, listen, an incredible Old Testament symbol of resurrection. It's an old English word, but if God can make Aaron's rod blossom, he can also make a blooming something out of you. You know, your marriage may be dead. It may be beyond hope. There may be, I mean, when things are bad and then get worse, what's the old saying? When things are bad and then get worse, it is time for resurrection. So they bring in. So Israel goes, man, we're getting killed. You know, Dodgers this year are killing us. Come on, Randy. I need some support. Anyway, I should have brought... So what should we, let's bring in the ark of the Lord. So they bring in the ark of the Lord into the camp there and a great shout. All the warriors just shout. Now I think this was supernatural, not just natural, but the shout was so loud that the enemies in Philistine heard, the Philistine army heard all the shouting and they were like, what's up with this? So one of them said, I know what's happened. They brought the ark of the Lord into their army. So what's up with that? And you know, we don't have a chance now, guys. And they, this, the whole army starts going, Israel's going to kill us. You know, this is the same God. Uh, I'm going to add to it now a little bit, but I'm sure the conversation was something like this. This is the same God that killed the Egyptian army when he parted the, the Red Sea. This God can do anything. And the Philistine army was terrified. Here's another side note. Sometimes if we finally wake up and realize who we are in God, we might just realize that some of the giants that we're facing are more afraid of what God can do through us than we are of them. It, it'll start to change a perspective a, a little bit. And boy, I don't care what that enemy is. Well, I've been facing this addiction for decades, Pastor. I know, and guys, I'm not going to say it's all going to be easy, but you know what? Greater is he that is in you. And if you finally get God in the midst of that situation, your enemy is going to start to be terrified. So now watch. So Israel has been getting wiped out, but they bring the ark back into the camp. When the ark shows up, a shout comes from the camp that is so enormous, and maybe God pumped up the volume as he does on occasion, that literally the enemy was being chickened now. We're going to get all the Philistines. We're going to get killed until one of the Philistine men, and here's where this verse is going to come from now. One of the Philistine men stood up and said this to the Philistine army. Now, remember now, this is not a word to God's army. This is a word to the enemies of God. And here's the word right here. Here's what this guy said. Almost like a football coach. He said, be strong and conduct yourselves like men, you Philistines. It's almost like that guy's looking around going, what is this? You guys are acting like a bunch of wimps out there says, be strong and conduct yourselves like men, you Philistines, that you do not become servants of the Hebrews as they, as they have been to you. Conduct yourselves like men and fight. Whoa. 
And you know what? If you go on, and by the way, 1 Samuel chapter 4 is a great chapter, easy to read. If, if you read on, guess what happens? Despite the fact that Israel had brought the ark back into the camp, after that word, the Philistine army went out and beat them again. The Philistines won. I would argue that if that works for them, how much more might God be speaking that to someone here? Be strong. Now listen, this is called House of Grace. I'm a huge believer in, in grace. Uh, I, that's it. I, I, this is not contrary to grace if you hear me right. But sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes someone you love may need to get in your face a little bit, and I want to do that today. I did this at my own church, although it's easier to do here, because here I can do it and leave. <laughs> at my own church, I get to do it, and I got to stay with my family. But I took a whole weekend, just a few weeks ago, because God gave me this word. Just, I just, I, this was a special word from the Lord for our church just, just a few weeks ago. And basically, I said, I wish I were out to Starbucks with each and every one of you as an individual. And, and you start to share with me your story. He said, 99.9% .9 of the time, we as pastors come across, oh, man, oh, we're so, oh, we love you. Come on, we're going to support you. We're going to be there for you. And I'm for that, just like I am with my kids. But sometimes, guys, you guys hear what I'm saying? Sometimes a loving father... A loving mother doesn't just say, oh, it's okay. But sometimes they got to get in your face a little bit. Say, hey, I know you're hurting. Husband just left. Found out all the junk that's been going on without you even knowing. For, you know, I, most of yeah, we're there to help. Both. Sometimes I want to get in your face and say, come on, man. I'm not going to promise you an easy solution, but snap out of it. Act like a man. I'll never forget when, um, it's been quite a few years ago now, I was at the lowest point of my ministry, the, one of the lowest points in, in my personal life, and I was just kind of, I'd kind of had it, I was kind of falling apart on the end. Now, people outside didn't know it that much, Mar Marguerite knew it, but, the, but, but, but I, was, I was, I was done. And I'll never forget this one conversation I had with my dad, who, who Randy knew. In fact, my dad died in church uh, on our was that our 10 year, 20 year celebration? My dad died in church. I've been in church my whole life. I'm in multiple services every week. No one has ever died in church. Some of y'all may look like you want to die right now, but no one's actually ever died. My dad actually died in the front row of church on our 20th anniversary Saturday night service. And he said, for our church to be right there in the front row, he just baptized a bunch of people and boom, he died. Right there in church. I'm, I'm gonna tell, and he was only 68. His dad had lived into his 90s. His grandpa lived into his 90s. I just thought I was destined to live into my 90s till that happened to my dad. Although, I, although here's, here's what I've told the Lord. I've said, Lord, I'd love to go out like my daddy, but I want to live about 30 years longer. Cause, 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 can, can you imagine what my dad experienced? We were in worship. Can you imagine? Can my dad was in his worship with his eyes closed? I can just imagine my dad is like, all of a sudden, wow. Worship's gotten really good. <laughs> it's normally good. It's gotten really good. And you open up your eyes, and you're in the presence of the Lord. Uh, I, I'm sad he died. And it was kind of a bummer to have him die in church on an anniversary service. But on the other hand, what a way to go. Yeah. To, man, if I could have my dream come true, not today, pray, Lord, I'm not talking about right now. But, but I'd love to be 98 years old. My dad was only 68. I'd love to they'd be 98 and be preaching with probably at that time some home someplace. I'll be preaching up there and just boom, preach and then bam, be gone. That'd, that'd, be, that'd be awesome. Either that or on the golf course. One of the two. <laughs> just having sunk a putt to win more money from Tom. <laughs> now, that would be pretty awesome. Back to one of my lowest points quite a few years ago, several decades ago now. I never got, I was talking to my dad, I was talking to my dad, and I was kind of, kind of falling apart. And my dad, who's the most graceful guy ever, he was a successful coach all these years with Little League and everything else, because he was the opposite of a demander. I mean, he would always correcting and positive. He was like that with me my whole life. But on one occasion, it was on this occasion, I'll never forget this. I was, and my dad basically looked at me, didn't touch me at all, but basically said, Jim, he said, stop it. It was almost like my, by the way, my dad did not do this, but it was almost like my dad went, uh -huh. know what I'm talking about? He didn't do it, but I felt a, 
He said, he said wait a minute. He said, you know, he said, you know what, Jim? I can't promise you this is going to work out okay. You know, you may end up leaving the church. You may end up losing this, 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 and this. You can imagine the kind of stuff you can go through. You're going to lose and everything. He said, but you know what? He said, even if you do, he basically said, I forget what words he used, but he basically gave this Philistine talk. He said, act like a man. He said, if you're going to go down, if the ship is going to sink, then act like a man. He said, don't you go down like this. He kind, of, he kind of said, you're not going to go down. But if you do go down, don't you go down like this. You go down like a man. And there are times as a pastor, and there are times maybe this is a word for someone here today. It's not that God doesn't love you. Oh, yeah, God's going to, I know it seems like life will never be good again. It will. But you know what? Even if it never gets good again, act like a woman. Come on, steel magnolias. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on, wonder woman. I wish I could promise you, in Jesus' name, God's going to bring all this back. He's going to restore. He will. We preach that all the time. I preach that all the time. But sometimes God has to say, come on, snap out of it. Even if you die of that cancer, you're not good. But even if you do, you go out like a woman of God. Don't you go out like this. If God doesn't restore this marriage, you're giving your best shot right now. But you know what? Act like a man. Don't you go out acting like this. And I can't tell you what that did to me. And there are times I think God, as a good father, as a good counselor, looks at some of us and says, come on, man, act like a man. In fact, I just want to say it to you one more time. Got every single person look at me right now. I don't even know all the stuff you're going through. Some of you are probably in a really good season. Some of you are in a tough season. One thing I had to finally figure out in my life is sometimes it's the same season. I used to think that, you know, uh, it's like, remember, was it Charles Dickens? It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Life to me is sometimes like railroad tracks. The church is doing as well as it's ever done, and my family's struggling. Or the family's finally got it together, and the church is going through hell. I remember being a little kid watching the old Ed Sullivan show. Kids, Google it. <laughs> and I remember all those acts on the old Ed Sullivan show. And I said, this is a little kid. This, kids, this kind of TV used to watch. Their big performers would come out. Just performers. They couldn't even get on TV nowadays. They couldn't get an audience nowadays. They put sticks on the thing and put plates on top of the sticks and start spinning them. Remember those things? And then they would spin this one. And then they would spin that one. And the music back there was going. And, and they get more and more sticks. And you see one plate start to wobble. And they try to rush over. And they try to get that one going on. And that one going on. And that one going on. Ah, uh, Listen, I know that. I some, sometimes in my life I feel like that. And I see people and talk to them all the time. You know, got, got all the family things finally. It's not great, but it's better. You know, oh no, you rush over here. To, oh, I'm going to sink financially. And then you finally get that going. I finally get uh, all that. And, I, and, and sometimes, even as believers, it could become so overwhelmed, we finally just go, oh, forget it. Crash. And maybe they do crash. Maybe they'll, push, push, push. Oh. Nonetheless, I want to look at you right now and say, you know what? It's going to be okay. It's not going to kill you. You're going to survive. God's going to do it. But you know what? Even if he doesn't, act like a man. Act like a man of God. Act like a woman of God. Don't you dare let that thing take you out like this. And the ironic thing about it is, at least in my life, is that when God has, has done that in my life, I don't know what it is. If I had more time, I could unfold it. I don't know what it is, but sometimes that becomes the launching pad to bring out about the victory I was looking for all along. It's almost like God is saying, do you love me more than the gift? No, are you willing to hang in there with me at some point? Even if you don't get that, you're still gonna follow me? To act like, okay, I'll act like a man. And when I finally do that from the heart, not to spin, not to have God do something, miracles start to happen. Somebody say amen. amen. I believe that with all my heart. When I, when I preached at our church a couple weeks ago, it was interesting because we have a young, one young man at our church named Brandon, and uh, he's a great story because he was in college. He has a PhD now. has a high-up job here in Southern Cal. But then he was finishing up his doctorate degree, I think, back at, I don't know, Vanderbilt or Cornell. That's what it was, Cornell. And uh, 
Somehow, he, he was a BB wine, he's African American, and he, he's a fan of the wine. And some of you may remember the BB and CC wine, they've gotten older now too, by the way, but <laughs> people years ago know the winans. And uh, so we've been good friends with the winans, especially with BB now for decades. So BB just a few weeks ago had his play uh, open up in Santa Monica. At least they've been, a couple, they've been in Atlanta, and they're going to get it to Broadway. But they did their Southern California opening night here a few weeks ago, and all these big stars are going to be there. We got to meet Stevie One. You know, all these, I could name drop, you know. Uh, my biggest thrill meeting, we'll see who remembers this guy. Huge stars are there, mostly African-American stars. And it was really fun to meet him. But I got to sit almost right next to Sidney Poitier. Oh. Now, watch, if, you, if you don't know who that is, I'm, the other celebrities were going up to Sidney Poitier. He's 90 something now, and I was just two seats away. I remember being a little kid and President Kennedy got shot. Was that November 22nd, 23rd, 1963? And boy, everything stopped. So that night, to kind of help the family feel better, my parents took me to see a movie. He had to go to Hollywood back in those days to see the new movies, the new big ones. They just started just in Hollywood. We went to Hollywood and saw a movie called Lilies of the Field. And uh, there was Lilies of the Field and was starring a young African-American actor named Sidney Poitier, who was working, helping some German nuns build a chapel. Uh, see the movies, uh, it's, it's, it's a good. Later on, he became the first African-American male to ever win the Oscar for best performance by an actor back in the early 60s. So here I am now, you know, at this thing. So we had one ticket, just before we got there, we had one extra ticket. So I asked Brandon, because I know he worked over there. He had come to our church initially from, from uh, Cornell because he loved the winings, and Bibia had done a CD at our church called Church, in which he kind of, he spelled it C-H-E-R, kind of like black church kind of thing. He'd be doing that at our church, and so he loved it. So he'd come out, so I knew he had, and he loves our church. He's had offers to transfer and get pay raises, but he won't move because he loves our church so much. He lives all the way out in Redondo Beach, drives in all the, and goes to all of our services every week. <laughs> he even goes to our Spanish service. <laughs> and uh, so, 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 I, so we, we contact, we say, hey, I, said, I don't know if your schedule's good. It's the last minute, but it's opening up. Would, would you like to go? And he said yes. So the reason that all came about, because Brandon had just contacted us, and he had heard this word, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you. So the same word that I get, I'm giving you, because basically, I, I got a few more things to say, but basically, my word to you today is, <laughs> you're not going to say this, act like a man. <laughs> act like a woman. It's not going to take you out. But if it does take you out, at least go out like a man or a woman of God. He heard that word. And so he, was, he told us the story that day. So he said, hey, he said, so that word really helped me. I said, what do you mean? He said, he'd been at work. And he has a high power job in the aerospace industry, really high power job. And uh, so he said, somehow they gave me this project. And he, and he said, he said I, I said, I can't explain this. Maybe if you guys work at companies, you'll understand. He said, but this project, he said, I didn't, know, I didn't know what to do. I had no idea what to do. I'm home and they expect this answer within a day or so. He said, I didn't know what to do. He said, I thought I was going to die. So I, I had these visions of my career going down the toilet and everything else. And uh, he said, but nonetheless, and also I thought of the word that God had given me through you, Pastor Jim. He said, act like a man. So he said, there I was kind of feeling sorry for myself. I can't do it. I'm not smart enough. And he has all, so he said, act like a man. And so he said, I said, okay. So I said, I'm going to, so if this thing kills me, it's going to kill me. But you know what? I'm going to give it my best shot. So if it's not good enough, and I get fired and all these other crazy scenarios. And by the way, he would not have gotten fired, but he goes, what I'm talking about. So you, yeah. you think that way. Bottom line is, it all came together. God gave him this answer to it, and he ended up getting, as far as me, he ended up getting accolades and promotions and all kinds of stuff through that. So I'm here today telling, telling you that. Act like a man, act like a, act like a woman. The thing is, is not going to take you out. That, that's important to hear because God, um, sometimes we're the only person left who has a word to encourage ourselves when we're going through something. I'm kind of editing it right now as I'm going along up here. I do this at my church all the time. I figure out where I'm at, I don't have enough time to do everything, so I'm trying to edit out right now. While, and I talk out loud. I'm talking out loud right now while I'm telling you I'm talking out loud. Remember, uh, th this is also in, in Samuel, but in 1 Samuel, remember that one time David, he wasn't yet king, and he was out, they were out uh, with this mighty man. Was, they'd been out there doing some uh, battles. 
And by the way, never forget David's mighty man, because David's mighty man, when they first gathered around him, it says those who were disenfranchised, those who were in debt, and, and those who were uh, or hurt, they gathered around David, and he, and he became their leader. That's one reason why God has brought you together, because I don't know what your background is, but, uh, you know, man, that's not, how can you make this group into a winner? Sometimes things can't be taught. they got to be caught. So David hangs around this, this motley crew. Never forget that. David's mighty men did not begin as mighty men. Say that one more time. David's mighty men did not begin as mighty men. They were hurt. They were disenfranchised. They were bitter. They were part of the out crowd. But after hanging around David, things began to change. And I can almost promise you, one of the things David taught these mighty men, shut up. <laughs> this sounds so unspiritual and so unpastorly, but sometimes when someone's sharing something with you, uh, or at least with, I'll put it with me, that way I won't, I won't put something in your mouth, I just want to go, shut up. Stop that. Stop acting like that. I come to church for the grace. I do too, but I think you're hearing what I'm saying. So David at one point, his men had gone out. When they came back home from a victory, remember that at Ziklag? This is 1 Samuel chapter 30. When they came home from, from Ziklag, that uh, I think it was the Amalekites had come in and just destroyed their little temporary village there and had stolen all, all the men. In fact, yeah, is that it? Yeah, let's look at this. Says, so David and his men came to the city and there, there it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept. Now look at that phrase, until... They had no more power to weep. Yeah. That, David knows what that's like, man. And then, if you know the story, I'm trying to make it quick here. At one point, the guys turn on David. Yeah. They come home, and they've lost everything, and they got to blame somebody. They go, it's David that did this. David has also lost his wife, his kids. They don't know what's happened to any of them. And so there's all the Amalekites have taken them. Are they dead, alive? We don't know. So at one point, the man, if you remember, I don't know how those verses are. I forget if I had those. I don't know if I do. Did I, did I say that? Yeah, there it is. I do. I'm glad I put that up there. Look at this. Watch. Now David was greatly distressed. See, we just see those as words. You know, the Hebrew there is super intensive. David is stressed out on steroids. This is beyond being stressed out. He thinks his family's gone. He thinks his leadership is over. He thinks his life is over for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But I like this, but David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Look at me right now. I, that was one key to David. David strengthened himself. The King James says, and David encouraged himself. Sometimes in leadership, let me tell you something, and all of you are leaders, some of there have been times I, I'm now transitioning Faith Community Church to my son. In fact, it's really, we've already reversed roles. I mean, for years, he's been my key advisor. I'm now his key, key advisor on that. But I can promise you, there have been many times as, as a leader, you catch all kinds of flack for stuff. It's like a quarterback in football that was not even your fault. They say quarterbacks get too much credit when they win and, and too much blame when they lose. I think the same thing is true of every leader. I know what it's like to go through a time in, in your life where the very people who you think would not even exist were it not for how God had used you. Now, what I'm going to say right now is going to sound maybe at first arrogant. I don't mean to come across like that. But there are people in my life I've looked at who God used me. Now, was it me? No. But God used me to bring about the salvation of, of their marriage. Maybe they wouldn't even be alive at all when we had, had not had a healing touch through me. And do you know how painful it is to have the very, how many guys know the very people we love the most also have the power to hurt us the most? We all know that that's true. That's what, that's what David was going through. That's, and that's tough. And look at David. How did David learn to encourage himself in the Lord? Because no one else was there to encourage him. Anyone remember that, that old Andre Crouch song from years ago? It was something like, uh, had I not gone through all this crud? This is not, not how the song went. But all I remember is the song was something like, had I not been through all this, I would have never known what the grace of God could do. I would not have known how much God could have absolutely saved me. So David encouraged, and I would argue that sometimes part of doing that is looking yourself in the mirror and go, come on, Jim, go for it. Hey, by the way, a lot of this I'm giving you right now was not planned. So I just feel like I'm sharing stuff the Lord's bringing to mind for someone here. 
For a lot of us here, let me just give you a word of advice on this. This message will be overwhelming if you're really, really in a super dark place right now. So what you have to do is don't discount what I'm saying, but at least do this. All right, I'll, I'll go one more minute. Sometimes what you have to do when you're, when you're going through hell. I can't imagine doing this. I mean, even, okay, I'll be strong, but okay, so just be strong for 60 more seconds then. Don't commit yourself. It seems too overwhelming to go for it for a life. Just do it one step at a time. Remember the old saying, how do you eat an elephant? One bite, one bite at a time. David encouraged himself in the Lord, and it worked for him. So watch, I've given you an example, if you will, of pagans, Philistines, where they said, <laughs> they said come on guys, be strong and act like a man. David had no one there to encourage him except for God. In fact, that verse actually says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Some of you need to learn, some of us need to learn how to do that if we're going to make it even more powerfully in this day and age. Amen, amen? Amen, amen. amen. So let me see. I'm going to go down to that last verse, guys. If you don't have it on the screen, the very last verse I have on, on all my notes, how did that all end up? By the way, David, what David did here, by the way, is David said, okay, he encouraged himself in the Lord. So he gets back up. He goes, okay, guys, we're going to go get it back. You know, who wants, to, who wants to go with me? And some of the guys decide to go with them. In fact, when they're on their way, uh, it's eventually about two-thirds of the guys finally give up. David says, all right, if you guys are too tired, whatever. Who wants to keep going? A, f a few keep going. And then the Bible says, yeah, that's, that's a good verse. So David recovered all. Someone say recovered all. Recovered all. That's a good word for them. You're going to recover all that the Amalekites had carried away and David rescued his two wives. And it goes on to say that, that it all worked out good. He recovered it all. He recovered it all. After he had encouraged himself in the Lord, he recovered it all. I love that promise. And that's a promise for someone here today. So let me teach you one last thing before I'm done. So I've talked about my, my key word for you on this day has been act like a man. Look at the person next to you and just say, act like a man. <laughs> or if it's a woman, say, act like a woman. <laughs> now, in order to do that, I'm gonna, I want to lead you just, just in a prayer. I'm going to teach you a prayer that I've also taught our church within the last couple of weeks. Because um, this has been what's fresh, fresh on my heart. And just like Krispy Kreme, I think it's better when it's the hot sign out there. To me, Krispy Kreme donuts are no better than any other donuts unless they're, unless they're warm. This, this is a, is, is a heart, hot word from the Lord. How does God do that, by the way? So if we're going to be strong, how does God do it? God does that however he wants. There are multiplied different ways that God does it. But I've noticed in my life that sometimes it's not so much what you know, it's, it's who you know. So what if God could align us in the right way, in the right place, at, at, at the right time? So I preached a whole message just a week and a half ago that I don't have time to, to preach right now. But I went to Proverbs chapter 3 and other passages, and I taught the church all about you know, just getting ready for God to bless your life. You guys ready to learn this? Okay, so first of all, look, with the person next to you right now, just give them a high five. Just, you, know, you guys all know what a high five is. All right, all right, that's good. If you could hear this word, act like a man, act like a woman, encourage yourself in, in the Lord, and totally make that commitment. Because what I'm going to give you right now, don't use that as a crutch. Use that as, I'm, I'm going to make this happen. I'm make this happen. God, I'm with you all the way. So watch. Here's what God will do. God will start to bring you into alignment with the right people. Someone just, just say right people. Right people. He's going to do it with the right people. I've, the older I get, the more I know that old saying's true. It is not what you know. It is who you know. So the right people. Think about it this week. What about today when you get home or tomorrow at work, wherever you're at? If God starts to connect you with the right person. A lot of the breaks I've gotten in life. If you want to look back over my life and call them breaks, call them blessings, call them whatever. I say a lot of times it's because I just happened to run into the right person. Anyone here believe that God can do that for you? It's just the right people. Someone say right places. And again, I'm going quick. I, I have scripture for all of them giving you right now. You just have to trust me on that. But also the right places. I am so thrilled to see you guys here on a Sunday morning. Even if you think today's service totally sucked and it didn't. But if you, but you think it did, you've already won a victory because you're at least in the right place. You're, there's a, God can do whatever God wants to do. 
But just like the old song, looking for love in all the wrong places, some of y'all are spending too much time in the wrong places. You know, you're, 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 you're probably not going to meet the right people in a strip club. God can do whatever he wants. Maybe there's a but, but it's not going to happen. So at least you showed up at House of Grace today. That doesn't guarantee anything. And you may not meet the right person. But you've at least increased your percentages of maybe running into the right person. So watch. The right people in the right place. Someone say right time. Right time. Timing's everything. Uh, every, again, tr timing is there. There have been times, when we've been married now for, for 45, will this be our, we just had our 45th anniversary, right? 45 years we've been married. And, and, and I learned a long time ago that sometimes I could say the right thing, but if I said it the wrong time, it was just as bad as saying the wrong thing. Amen. Any married people know what I'm talking about? <laughs> So we know what God can do. But I, I'm going to let God, because I, I I'm, I'm within minutes of being done right now. But I want to get these. So the right people, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And thank God, if you don't know anyone, you at least know God. Yes, yes. And I, if God is for us, who can be against us? But the right people, in the right places, at the right time, in the right way. Someone just say right way, right. so that right things can start to happen. Say right things. Right. So I've been teaching faith, and this whole love is wise. I mean, we need to start changing our whole expectation level. I got to know Oral Roberts before he died. You know, Oral lived down by Fashion Island the last, what, 10, 15, 20 years of his life, and uh, I didn't even like Oral Roberts. I, I never met the guy. I didn't like him. I thought he was, must be a, a, kind of like a... You know, I believe some of the critics about him. When I got to meet Oral, all that, all of that just totally, totally disappeared when I finally got to meet, meet Oral Roberts. That ended up being, for me, a right person in the right way. And, and Oral would sit down and look at me. Never, never. He'd say, Jim, what do you believe in God for? Let's pray. Every other pastor I'd ever been around, big name pastors, people you know from TV, they would very rarely say, let's pray. He'd actually pray. The other guys would talk about prayer. He prayed with me. And that, can, that was just a little connection for me that changed my life. The right people in the right places, in the, at the right time, in the right ways, so that right things can start to happen. I see it happening to you this week. So I'm done, but, but look, look at me. So what have you said today, Pastor? I really believe God gave me a word for you guys. I don't even know how well I preached it. In fact, I didn't even use very much scripture today, and I'm known for a teacher. I can break down the word of God when I want to break. I can, I, I, but I felt God had this word for you. So the, remember, to, just to quickly review before I pray for you, the first one may be the biggest. It's not because I don't love you or I'm being mean. Sometimes love goes just like my daddy. It was so not him. It was so out of character that it actually had more power to me because he would almost never do something like that. So the boom, what? No. And it kind of woke me up. Come on, man, act like a man. Act like a woman. This thing's not going to take you out. But if it does take you out, if, if you're married to someone and they're going sideways, well, then you go right. I wish I could guarantee your marriage would work, but I can't. But you know what? You be the right kind of woman, the right kind of man in the midst to see whatever God happens to do. Act, 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 act like a man. And, and the second thing I said is, and sometimes you're all going to be, oh, man, no one's there for me. Shut up. Encourage yourself in the Lord. <laughs> David encouraged himself in the Lord. His best friends were going to kill him. I gave my life to these guys. These guys exist because of me. Yeah, and, sure, and yet sometimes those very same people are ones that have to, they don't only leave your life, it's bad enough, they leave your life talking bad about you. And then I don't know about you guys, God always tells me I can't say anything about it. He goes, www.zipit.com. I can't even fight back. <laughs> he says, if you fight back, you, you'll be in a fight. But if you just stand back and... and, and I take the high road, then, then I'll take care of you. So much. And then finally I said the high five. Right people at the right time, in the right place, in the right way, so that right things will happen. I may have switched around how I said that at one point. I'm going to say it one more time. Right people in the right place, at the right time, in the right way, so that right things will happen. So hold up one hand at least. So I'll just say again, say right people, right, people. right, place, right place, right time, right, time. right, way, right way, right things. Right right Give way. someone a high five right next to you right now. I expect, I know I won't be here next week, but I expect you guys, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, 
something incredible is going to happen. The reason I brought up Oral Roberts' name a moment ago, and I'll close with it, because Oral Roberts, for years, before I ever knew him, probably before most of you ever heard of him, in his early days, Oral Roberts always had a banner over every one of his meetings, every one. And it just said, I think it said, expect a miracle. And of course, I remember him being, something good. Remember those days on TV with Oral? Something good's going to happen to you. And that's the bottom line. But it's not right now. Act like a man. <laughs> When's you going to heal me? Act like a man. Act like a woman. If the cancer takes you out, it's not going to. But if it does take you out, you go down like a woman of God. Yeah. And but encourage your, well, no one's come visited me. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Don't have a pity party. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And then start to align yourself. Align yourself with the right people. And trust God to be at the right places at the right times in the right ways so that right things can start to happen in, in, in your life. Let, let, let me pray right now. This message was totally to everyone just look at me for one more moment, but I'm going to pray. This message was totally for the church. Amen. This was the exact opposite of an evangelistic message. <laughs> However, just before I, I, I give the mic to Randy here, I, I just want to pray for let, let me pray for, let, let me pray for you first. I'll do that, and then I'll pray this. So, so first of all, put both your hands up for a moment right now. Father, I align house of grace with you. God, I'm praying right now. In fact, now put your hand over your heart. God, I pray for every single brother and sister here, that God, even this week, maybe in some unusual ways, you'll start to align us with the right people in the right places at the right times in the right ways so that right things can start to happen in our lives. We speak that in Jesus' name. Put your hands down and look at me one more time. And yet, even though this talk was totally not geared towards the non-believer, someone's here at this church service today, and I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to make. I'm not going to, you know, point you out at all. But you need to get your life right, right with God. Because honestly, before right things in the right time and the right ways can happen to you, you need to make sure you got the right connection with the Lord. And if you're here and your life's not right with God, listen. God's not mad at you. He's still madly in love with you. If you walk out of here mad at him, thinking he's, uh, he's not mad at you, he, he's more in love with you than he's ever been. He's not your problem, he's your solution. So if you're here in the house, house of grace here this morning, uh, I just want to take a moment, and I'd, I'd just like to pray with you. And you know what, even though I did not give an evangelistic talk, if your life's not right with God, you know that. You don't even, you don't even need a message. You just know it's not right with God. Maybe it's not right with God because you've gotten away from Him. You used to walk with the Lord, but you maybe you've gotten way away or a little bit away. But you know that you need you need to reconnect. Kind of like a prodigal son, prodigal daughter. You need to come home. Someone else may be here today. Maybe you've never given your life to the Lord before, and this would be a great chance to do it. Just just right now. It's just very simple. In fact, here's how I want to do it right now. Everyone, everyone, look at me right now. Whole house, look at me. Just look me in the eye. I know I can't see everyone at once in the eye. You guys can kind of look at me. I want to ask you to do something. If you're here today, and this is all I'm going to do to you, nothing more than this, all right? If you're here today looking at me, like all of you are, if, if you're already a believer and, and, you're, and your life is pretty set with God, uh, just keep looking this direction, but close your eyes. Keep looking at me if today's the day that you need to make it a choice to get your life right with God for the first time or to recommit to Him. So close your eyes if you feel that you're cool. But if there's any question at all, then just keep looking at me right now. Just, just keep looking at me. I can see a couple of you looking at me right now. In fact, I can see several of you looking at me. And, and just keep looking at me. I just want to say something to you. I'm really proud of you right now in a church setting have the guts to look at me. Because that's, that's kind of not always easy. <laughs> you know, what people think. First of all, they're never going to know. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about it. But second, that takes some courage. And I'd like to agree with you right now in prayer. So what I'm going to do right now, so you can all open your eyes, look back at me. Uh, you that just had your eyes open, I'm going to say a prayer right now, and I want you to say this prayer after me. Now, you won't feel picked on, because I want to ask all of us to say this prayer, okay? Even if you've been a believer as long as I have, <laughs> you know, decades, you've been a believer. And then I'd like you to say this prayer. It's like Marguerite, I've been married now, I said 45 years. She still likes me to say, I love you. So if you pray, God, come into my life, Jesus, he's not going to be mad about that. So you believers, you can say this prayer as a reaffirmation. If you were looking at me a moment ago, because you need to reconnect with God or connect for the first time, would you join us in this prayer? In fact, we're all really doing it for you right now. So it's kind of, and so you won't feel like there's a spotlight in you or something like that. So everyone here, just kind of say after me. Believers say it. You need to connect with God. If you're looking at me, you say this too. Say, Father, thank you for loving me with a steadfast, stubborn love and never giving up on me. Even when at times I've given up on you. 
I need your help. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord, my Savior. I'm sorry for my sin. Forgive me. Heal me. Renew me. Revive me. Refresh me. And put me on the path to my purpose and destiny. Everything I am or ever shall be is yours in Jesus' name. One more time, ever put your hand up. Father, I pray that this week that you'll somehow, God, maybe out of the blue, maybe an old friend or someone we've never met before. God, I pray this week you might begin to connect us with the right person and people in the right kind of places, at the right time, in the right ways, so that right things can start to happen in an unprecedented fashion in our lives. We pray these things together today in Christ's name. Amen and amen.